Welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla and I'm glad you're here. I'm really excited about today's video because I am here to talk to you today about the Cashmere Ames jeans. So let me show you what the pattern looks like. Here's the pattern. I bought this when they came out. And so I don't know when that was, a year or so ago. And I also bought the class, but I just never had the nerve to do it. I didn't even watch the class. I just, I felt like jeans were so far out of my skill set that it would be nothing but a frustrating mess to try to make. So I don't remember how it happened. Natita and or I, one of us said we were making it. And then Natita, maybe, I, maybe Natita said she was making it and I said I was too. And she asked if um, I wanted to like just chat back and forth, like not do a formal video um, uh, collaboration, but just to, make them together and chat with each other. And so I was like, yes, let's do that. That sounds fantastic. And so um, I got them cut out with Natita. I was one step behind her for a long time. And then I couldn't continue on because I had, um, I had the Mayfield Fabric Challenge to sew for and I had a bunch of other stuff. And so she just, went on ahead and made fantastic um, jeans. And I will link her below. I know that all of you are already subscribed to Natural Dane, but um, you can see her review of the Cashmere at Jeans, the Ames Jeans, which I think it's good to hear from more than one person um, when you're thinking about sewing a pattern. So um, I will link that below and I just want to thank Natita because I feel like if it weren't for her encouragement that we get started at all, um, that I would not have made them. So because I agreed to, you know, work with her, even though I fell far behind, um, I still wound up getting them finished and that would not have happened without her. So thank you, Natita. I appreciate that. And you for your, um, encouragement. So this is, if you don't know anything about Cashmere at Patterns, Cashmere at Patterns is a pattern company that was started by this woman here. This is Jenny Rushmore and she's a curvy girl and an experienced sewer. And she started her own pattern company right at about three years ago. I believe the Appleton dress was their first release. I've made three Appletons. I think I wore one in a, a, a recent video. Um, I think I've worn all of them in videos actually. And um, this pattern, as I said before, came out about a year ago. So I have, I made a list because I want to, normally I just blather on and some in, incoherent um, mumbling. Boy, this camera seems awfully high having to like look way up there to look at you guys. Um, maybe if I sat on my foot, yeah, that's a little bit better. Kind of giving me an eyeball ache having to look up like that. Um, oh, by the way, my outfit today, I went out for lunch with my girlfriends um, and I wore my jeans. This was their maiden voyage out in public. Um, they felt fantastic. I was able to eat a taco salad. Well, half of one. You can't really eat a whole one now, can you? Um, and um, feel really fantastic in them. So, a reminder about the Mayfield Fabric Challenge. So, that video went up on January 1st. So, you can check for that video. Uh, a lot of people in the comments section just comment on the video. I wanted to remind you that if you want to play, your official entry is you saying what fabric from the store you want to play with. Because we have drawn people in the past who um, didn't say what they wanted to play with and we will skip them. So if you want to play, make sure that you go to the store, 
find a fabric that you'd like to work with and come back and comment on that January 1st video. We will draw the winner on February 1st from the January 1st video. All right, enough about that. Let's go on with the jeans. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is the inside pocket that I used for uh, the inside fabric that I used for the pockets. These pockets go all the way across. Boy, there's a lot of threads in here I need to snip. Uh, from here to here, that kind of gives you tummy control. I have to say that my tummy looks much, much flatter in these jeans than it does in any other jeans that I own. Um, my favorite brand of jeans are Levi's, um, but they don't come anywhere near. I bet if we did a measurement that I'm probably an inch or more smaller when wearing the Ames jeans than I am in any of the other jeans that I own. Um, it could be because these are one of the few pairs of jeans that I have that fit me right now and the others are all too big, but um, still, I still feel like it holds me in better. But this cute fabric with coffee cups all over it, this was a gift from Barbara over at Sewing Janie. I won um, one of her subscriber contests uh, or giveaways, it wasn't a contest. And this was one of the sweet fabrics. It was a beautiful um, giveaway and, and so incredibly generous. And this was one of the fabrics. This is a Debbie Mom quilting cotton and it's just the cutest and I love having it inside here because every time I wear these, I'm going to think about um, Barbara and her generous gift that I won. So that's the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Next is the size. These jeans come in two fits. Got something in my eyeball. They come in apple and pear shape. So if you are an apple shape and most of your weight um, is in your tummy, then you will cut the apple. And if you are more of an hourglass or your waist is smaller than your hips or your fanny, then you're going to cut the pear. I cut a size 20 pair. Um, so with that, I have notes, but they're not in any kind of order, but I'm going to stick to them so that I cover everything. Um, the waistband top stitching was the hardest part. Um, it just is hard to finagle the jeans all the way around in your sewing machine and in the through the harp. That's the the harp space is the space between the needle and the um, stand. Is it called the stand um, of the machine? And I got um, <laughs> I got a little too close to the edge a couple of times, and um, so there's that. But, um, and then there's a pucker right here. I think that's the only pucker on the whole pair of jeans. So when I say that sewing this waistband was the hardest part, I want you to understand that these jeans were so fun and easy to make. Each step, now I have the class from Jenny. So she's going through it. But if you go watch Natita's video, she did not have the class. And yet she really um, liked making them too. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be scooting around. This is not comfortable at all. Um, she did not have the class and she was able to make the jeans really easily. And so I followed along in the class and I just did every step. Now, if you don't have the class, and Jenny's classes are kind of expensive. I think they run $59, but it's fun to have someone there with you while you're sewing. Jenny is a pleasant woman and easy to listen to and a good teacher. And so, and I'm a visual learner. Sometimes looking at pattern stuff leaves me completely mystified. I can read it and look at the diagrams and I don't get it at all. Like, it's like, what's happening? What, what are they even talking about? I have no clue 
what they're talking about. And so um, the book is extensive. So you get, let's look here, you get a 32 page book. So if you're worried, um, if you're worried about not having enough directions, I don't think that's going to be a problem for you if you don't have a class. There are a lot of things to cut out. So that's a lot. Um, I did not put the belt loops on my first pair. You can see no belt loops. I never tuck my shirt in and I think belt loops look kind of messy. They're always poking out and you can see them. Um, so I didn't want them and I didn't put rivets on. I was going to, to practice, but I just, I just didn't do it. Uh, they're fine. I did practice with the button and that went on just fine. Um, there's a lot of pieces to cut out and I just, Natita had texted me a photograph of her sticky note with all the pieces and her check marks on it. And so I just copied her because I'm a copycat. And um, I wrote down all the pieces and I checked them off as I got them tracing. If you want to know the truth, tracing the pattern was harder than making it. And I will never do it again. I would rather pay $18 or whatever the cashmere at patterns cost and buy another one than trace. I hate tracing so much. It's hard for me to even describe to you how much I hate tracing. And I have decided that it is no longer, it is not worth it for me. There's the time and the money. And you make your choices about where you're going to spend your time. Do you want to take the time to raise chickens and butcher and process and deal with all that, pluck all their feathers out, do that whole nonsense? Or do you want to buy already done chicken under plastic at the grocery store? That's kind of how I feel about tracing patterns. I'm willing to pay for a pattern. And so that was the most awful part of the whole process. I think it took me more than two hours to trace the pattern and I don't enjoy doing it and I'm not going to ever do it again. There, I said it out loud ever. I'm never doing it again. And so, um, there's that. The rest of it, I just followed step by step. I only had two problems, one problem, sewing the whole set of jeans and that was the waistband. I don't know why waistbands are so hard for me. I follow all the directions. I cut out things neatly. I measure them when I iron them. And yet, still, there are many places. Look, I did not catch that. Can you see that? I did not catch that. Why? Why did I not catch that? Why does that happen to me all the time? Now, the thing I'm thinking happened here. I think that I folded the, this is a non-stretch denim on the inside because I wanted a firm inner waistband. I think I rolled under this waistband, the outside waistband to the facing too far. I hope that's what I did wrong. And I think that that is because in most cases, if I just had this much, down here that it would have worked. So that's something that I will keep in mind for next time. I don't think I struggled on anything else. The top stitching that I used, I meant to get that spool of thread to show you. It's a jeans thread and it's denim colored. And so it, um, it's kind of variegated. And so it's cool. It does show but it doesn't show too much and that's good because I'm proud of the top stitching that I did but it isn't perfect and so I would rather have them and feel like I can wear them without them looking um to Becky Homecky um while I get better at my top stitching 
I did notice, I don't know why this happened. Look, I've got some top stitching coming out right here. I don't know why that is. I could probably put that underneath the machine and just re-sew that, just that section. It won't be fun, but it looks like my bobbin thread just gave way. All of this is about to come out. Hmm. Is it happening over here too? No. That might be a sewing machine problem. I don't know. But okay, let me try to keep going. Let me try to stay focused. I sewed this this these jeans on four different machines. All of my top stitching was done on my 1947 Singer 201, um, and it did beautifully. It didn't have trouble with anything at any point. Um, it's a straight stitch machine, so um, I couldn't use it for my bar tacks. So I did my bar tacks on Troy's White, um, which is, a, we don't know um, the model. It's some thing between 1950 or 40, somewhere from the 40s to the 50s, um, to the 60s, I think. And then I did all of the construction on my 1950 Featherweight. It too had zero problem going through the layers of denim. Zero problem, never gave me a moment's grief. Um, and then I did the um, seam finishes on um, my brother, Serger. I have that one that everyone has, 1034D or whatever. And um, it did fine. Um, so next time what I will do differently is I will serge all of the pieces before I begin construction. Um, Jenny isn't really good about reminding you to do that in the class. That would be, I think, my only criticism, if that's even a criticism. She talks about it, but she doesn't remind you right at the beginning to go ahead and finish X seams or whatever. Um, she does talk about it throughout the, the rest of the thing. So um, here's, I chose three adjectives for the making of the Ames jeans. And not, no really fancy adjectives, very simple ones. Fun, easy, and empowering. I had fun sewing these, these jeans. Sometimes when you're working on something that has a lot of steps, it's not fun and you get a little tired of it. That was not the case with these jeans. They were fun to make. And each step, it was like, like almost like a treasure hunt or a scavenger hunt. I would go and I would watch the class and I'd be like, okay, and I would turn off my computer and I'd run over and I would do that step. And um, that's how it was throughout the entire time. And um, so I just would watch Jenny and she would tell me what to do and she would demonstrate it and I would run over and I would do it. Um, it just went together so easy um, and fun. It was fun to do. The empowering part, I'm a little bit I don't know, it's a little bit, not shocking, but surprising how empowering it feels to sew something that you've been so intimidated by for, you know, the amount of time that you've been sewing and um, to realize how easy it was. It was easier to sew these jeans than it was to sew um, that button down shirt that I did recently, the whole, the button shirt with the um, binding, the bound plackets and all of that. Making these jeans was easier than that and less fiddly. I'm not kidding you. Um, that awful uh, butterick shirt that I made, the tunic with the, um, the placket thing right here, that was harder than making these jeans. So I'm telling you, those two tops were harder than making these jeans. If you've been worried about making jeans, just do it. You, you can do it. Um, so many of us have now made them. We're in the club. I just made that up. There's no club. Just ask us. If you get confused or lost or you know anything, just ask one of us. We will be happy to help you. Um, and believe me, if we can do it, you can do it too. It's not like we have some kind of superpower, okay? And so this denim, 
is 2% stretch. I got it at fabric.com. I had bought an entire bolt of Robert Kaufman denim with the specific purpose for making my Ames jeans. And then I realized that it was 1% stretch and these are supposed to be 2% stretch. So I don't know if a bigger size would work and you could use that denim. I don't know how that works. One of my commenters said that 1% stretch would not work for the Ames jeans, but I wonder if you went up a size if it would. I love the color of, the, of this denim. I love the color and I love the, um, the, the, the kind of the whiteness, the weave, the lines in it. I don't love the smell. This is the stinkiest fabric that I have ever been associated with in my entire life. It smells like turpentine or gasoline. I don't know. I washed them twice and dried them twice. I thought maybe the laundry room was going to blow up. After I washed them and dried them twice, I ran a bleach load through my washer and dryer to help clean it out. And for the next month, because in that bleach load were all of my uh, washcloths that I removed my makeup with every single night. And so there was probably 30 of them in that load or 20. For the next month, I could smell that turpentine on my face cloths every night when I washed my face as I got down through that whole stack of face, cl face cloths. I can still smell it. I went out to lunch with a girlfriend. She picked me up. She drives a Jeep. I drive a Prius. Priuses aren't that great in the snow and our roads are snow packed. Uh, I could smell it while I was sitting in her Jeep. And um, so it was from fabric.com. It was eight, seven ninety nine a yard. And you just need to be aware of that, um, that this denim from fabric.com is stinky, super stinky. And I'm not going to wash it again until I wear them probably four or five more times. Had them on for three hours, you know, while we went out for lunch. I'll hang them back up and um, I want to wear them several, several times before I wash them. I try to do that with new jeans. Okay. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you. The two, there's three pattern alterations that I would make for next time. Number one, right here, this side seam right here, you can see that curve, which is good. Jenny's things are designed for the curvy body and she's a genius um, at pattern drafting for curves. But for me, right about here, it gets too big. There's poof on it. It's, there's wrinkles um, and it's just loose from the side of my thigh. Right about where I sit down, where my leg crease is. I don't know what that's called. Your hip bone where your, your leg crease is when you sit. Um, I, I took it in a quarter of an inch, which means half an inch on each side. And the next time I make them, I'm going to take it in a little bit more than that, maybe up to half an inch. So that'll be a, an inch off of each side right there. Um, that's the only place that doesn't fit me really well, except for the waistband. And the waistband sticks out from my back, literally the tiniest bit. I'm not even sure I will adjust for that. Um, I'm not sure how I would, but I might look into it. Um, and then the last thing is the length. These work well with my cons. That's what I wore today. Um, and they'll be cute with flats, ballet flats, loafers, that kind of thing. But I couldn't wear these with any kind of heeled shoe. Um, I will add an inch to the length. Um, I don't mind if the back of my jeans is just touching the ground, not dragging but just touching the ground. That doesn't bother me. I like my jeans long. These will, I think, be cute like boyfriend style. I will be able to roll them up with no problem. Um, so I'm, they're not high water down, but um, they're not as long as I would like them. And then was there anything else? All right. 
So that's all I have on that today. Um, I highly, highly recommend this pattern. If you are a curvy girl, if you are size 12 through 28, I recommend these jeans, okay? A size 12 body measurements are 32 waist and for the hip on the apple 42, the hip on the pear 43. And then the 28 is a waist of 48 inches, hip of 58 inches for apple and hip of 59 inches for pear. And so I highly recommend it. I really do. Get this pattern if you're size 12 to 18, 28 I mean, and I do not think you will be disappointed. I hope this wasn't too long. I'm really excited about these jeans and I want to encourage you. 2019 is the year for all of us to step our sewing skills up a notch. And if you haven't made jeans, you can do it. Take care. Video on you now. Let's get some more pictures. I just want a picture for Instagram. You like my jeans? I made them. Thank you.